All right, so this is kind of a cool little project. Basically, we, we're gonna just track glasses of water or cups of water. And basically, we have a goal of two liters. And we have this big cup here. And this is just all CSS, so we're gonna style this and then add some JavaScript functionality. So if I click on this first one here, you can see that we have 12.5% of our two liters. We have 1.75 liters remaining. And if I click on like the fourth one here, it's going to not only highlight this one or fill this cup, but all the way up to that cup. And now you can see I have 50% and one liter remaining. And then here, you know, 0.75 remaining, 62.5. If I go to 100%, fills up the whole thing. So I think it's a cool little project to kind of manipulate the DOM, do a little bit of calculation in the JavaScript. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so we're going to bang out the HTML and CSS for this drink water project. So let's jump right into our index HTML. And for the title here, I'm going to change that to drink water. And then in the body, let's get rid of this H1. And we're going to have an H1 for the heading here and just say drink water. And underneath that, we'll have an H3 with our goal. And our goal is going to be two liters. And then underneath that, let's have a, a class of cup. Now, this class of cup is going to be basically just like the shape of the cup, the the flat top and then the rounded kind of U shape. And this is going to be used on the big cup and all the small cups, the, the eight small cups. Um, so this first one we're doing, though, is going to be the big cup. And inside here, we're going to have a class of remained. And this is basically going to have, you know, the the amount that is remaining. Uh, for your goal. So inside remained actually want to add an ID to this as well because I'm going to use an ID to grab onto it in the JavaScript. So let's just say remained and then in here we'll have a span and let's give this an ID of leaders. And for now we'll put in here 1.5 L and then we want a small tag with just kind of a label. It's just going to say remained. Obviously, this span, this is going to change. This small tag is not. It's just static. So underneath the remained div, but still within the cup, we're also going to have a percentage. So this will be like the percentage that has been, you know, that you've drank. And this will be an ID also of percentage. And then inside here, I'm just going to do I'm just going to put 20%, but that's going to be dynamic. Now, underneath this last div so that this is the, the cup div, we're going to have a paragraph with the class of text. And in here, we'll just say select how many glasses of water that you have drank. Okay, and then underneath the paragraph, let's have a class of cups because this is where all the little cups are going to go, which are also going to have a class of cup, but also a class of cup dash small. Okay, and then in here we'll say 250 ml and we want eight of these. Let's put a, we'll put a space here. So let's do that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm just going to add the class of full to a couple of these because the full class is going to give, you know, it's going to look like there's uh, like there's water in it. It's going to be have a, a blue background. So we'll say full on the first two. And that should do it for the HTML. It's going to look like this. And let's jump into our CSS. I'm going to use the Montserrat font. So I'm going to grab from here, delete that and say CSS family and family is going to be Mont. Uh, what is it? Mont Surratt two R's. And for the weight, let's do colon 400 comma 600 like that. And then we'll change Roboto to Montserrat. Montserrat. I have trouble spelling that for some reason. OK, and then for the body here, let's give this a background color. And we're going to use hexadecimal value three, four, nine, four. E four. OK, and then we'll give it a color. The text color will be white. It's more readable. And then let's see, as far as the body here, we can get rid of. Um, let's see, we don't actually need justify content or height or overflow hidden. And then margin, I'm going to set just margin bottom of 40 pixels like that. 
and then we have some general styles like h1 uh, for the h1 i'm going to set margin to do 10 pixels 0 0 and then the h3 which is the goal i'm going to set the font weight let's set the font weight to 400 and let's set the margin to 10 on the top and bottom all right now we have our cup so the class of cup this is for the the one big cup that's going to be up here and for the eight small ones so it's just going to kind of give it that shape so let's start with giving them a background color of white okay so it's going to look like that and the border here is going to be let's do four pixels solid now this color i'm going to use as the border color as well as the um, the font color so i'm just going to put some of these colors in custom properties so up at the top you don't have to do this but since we're going to re be repeating some of these colors on the root scope i'm going to say border dash color and we're going to set that to the value of hexadecimal 144 FC6. OK, which is going to be like that darker blue. And then. For the border here, we'll pass in var and or we'll say var and we'll pass in the border color like that. And then the color is also going to be. The same color as the border, so the text color and then let's set a border radius now i want the top to be straight edged so zero zero and the bottom left and right will be 40 pixels okay now let's give this give these a height i'm going to use 330 pixels for the height and then the width is going to be 150 pixels now at the moment, all of these are, are big cups, right? So they're all this height and width. But later on, we're going to have remember, we have this cup small class, so we're going to make these smaller later. But the initial the initial height and width will be this. Um, and then we also want to add, let's say, margin 30 pixels on the top and bottom. And I'm going to display flex and let's set the flex direction to column so we want the want the flex items to be on top of each other and uh, i think that should be it let's set overflow to hidden as well so nothing comes out of the container and we should be good now for the small cups let's say wherever there's a cup a class of cup and also cup small then Let's set the width of that. So instead of uh, instead of, you know, 330 pixels, let's set the the width to 50 pixels and let's set a height of 95 pixels. OK, so you can see now these are smaller. Now, the the way that the bottom looks, this looks way more rounded because it's smaller. So we want to set instead of having a border radius of, you know, 40 pixels on the bottom, let's set these to 15 on the bottom and it'll look more, you know, more similar to how this looks. OK, and then let's set. Let's do a background color of RGBA. Not RGBQ, RGBA and white, so 255 for red, green, blue, and then the alpha value will be 0.9. And then let's set the uh, let's set a cursor to a pointer because we're going to be clicking on these to fill them up. So we want that cursor to be a pointer. And I'm going to set the font size on this to 14 pixels. And let's set. Uh, I'm also going to do. Align items to the center because we already have display flex. Remember, the cup class has display flex, so I want to align items to the center. I also want to justify content to the center and text align. Whoops. And also text align to the center. OK, so now you can see that these this text is in the middle and let's add a margin of five pixels. 
and I want to transition on this as well because when we click on it to fill we want that like transition um, effect so let's do 0.3 seconds and we'll use the ease effect okay and I think we should be good as far as as far as the small cups um, now we do have a class of cups plural wrapped around this and we want to set that to a flex box so these are in a row so let's add the class of cups and set that to display flex and as soon as I do that it's going to display them all in a row I do want them to knock on to the next line um, so what we'll do is set a flex wrap value of wrap and uh, it's not going to go on the next line yet because we need to add a width here so the width I'm going to set on cups is going to be 280 pixels and that should just be enough to wrap you know after the fourth one it's going to knock the next one on to the next line all right I'm just going to align items center and justify content center as well good now for the full cups remember the first two have a class of full so I'll say any class of cup that has cup small and full I'm going to set the background color to uh, actually I'm going to set this as the as a variable and we'll call this fill color and then up here let's set on the root scope fill color and this is going to be hexadecimal value 6 so 6 ab 3 f8 and now you can see that the first two have this background color because they have that class of full now the full class we also want to have the color of the text to be white so that it's a little more readable and that should do it now for the for up here we have the remained remember a div with the class of remained and a div with the class of percentage so for remained let's see so remained I'm going to add display flex I want to center everything so we'll say align item center justify content center and text align center and actually let's set the flex direction we'll set that to column okay and then I want this to take up you know most of this right here so we'll set the flex value to 1 and then let's add a transition here as well because when it fills we want to have that kind of like you know transition animation effect so 0.3 seconds ease now the span so inside remember inside remained we have this span which has the you know it wraps around the 1.5 l so let's say remained span and I just want to set the font size on that to 20 pixels and let's set the font weight to bold okay and then we have the small tag so let's say uh, remained small which is just the text right here remained and I just want to set that font size to 12 pixels All right. Now for the percentage part which is down here. So percentage, we're going to set the background color and I'm going to use the uh, the fill color here. So let's take the variable of fill color and set that. And then make the font size to 30 pixels and we want to center this So let's add display flex and we're going to set align items to center and justify content to center. That will put that in the middle. Uh, let's make the font weight bold as well. So font weight will do bold. Okay, and then let's set the height to 
So it'll have an initial height of zero and then transition. We're also going to add here. Let's do 0.3 seconds ease. All right, so I think that should do it. And then for the text down here. So that's a, a paragraph with the class of text. And all I want to do here is just make sure we text align to the center. And let's also add margin to 005 pixels. All right, cool. So that should be good for the CSS. Now in the index HTML, we can get rid of the full class here on both of these. I just wanted to test it out, make sure it looks right. Also, the the data like the 20%, we don't need that. That looks kind of weird because this is empty, but we can still see the top of the 20%. Uh, I mean, you could leave it there. It's going to get overwritten by what we have in our JavaScript, but we'll just get rid of that. And then also the 1.5 L that's going to come from the JavaScript as well. Okay, so in the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll start on our script JS file. Okay, so now we're going to get into the JavaScript here, the fun part of this project. And first thing we want to do, like with most of these projects, is bring in what we want from the DOM. So we want all these small cups. So let's say document dot, and we're going to use query selector all because there's there's eight small cups, right? There's not just one element we're selecting. And we want all the cup dash small classes. So that'll put put them all into a node list of elements with the, you know, the class of cup small. Next, we want the leaders. So leaders is it's the number above remained. So right here. So it's I mean, there's nothing there right now, but that's what we're grabbing and we need to insert something in that. So we want to grab that element. We're going to use get element by D has an ID of leaders. And then we want two more things. We want the percentage. Okay, so percentages is down here. It's going to be the percentage full for the big cup. And then the remained is the opposite. So remained. All right. So remained is this right here, this whole div with the leaders in the remained. All right. Now, the way that I'm going to handle this is we're going to take all the small cups and we're going to loop through with a for each. So for each takes in an arrow function and first is going to be whatever we want to call each item, which I'll call cup. And then we can have the index, which is going to be, you know, zero through however many cups. So zero through seven, basically. And in fact, I can just console log the index. And if I open up my console. Uh, yeah, so it's just logging. It was just showing the index of each one. Now, what I would what I want to do is add an event listener on each of the cups. So let's say cup dot add event listener. And we want to listen for a click event on each cup. And when that happens, we're going to call a function. So we're going to add an arrow function here that calls a function called highlight cups. And we're then going to pass in that index so we know which one we're clicking on. So down here, we'll create a function called highlight cups, which takes in an index. And then here, let's console log index. And now whatever one I click on, it's going to show that index. So what I want to check here is when I click on one of these, basically I want to add the full class because remember when it has a class of full, it gets colored blue. So I'm going to take all the small cups and there's a few different ways you could do this. This is probably the easiest way. So if we take all the small cups and loop through number four, each takes in an arrow function and we want to say for each cup, Now, I don't want to use IDX here because I'm, I'm using it here. I'm passing it in. This is the index of the cup we're clicked on. This is the index of you know, each one in this loop. So let's call this one index two. And then here we'll do a check and we're going to see because what I want to do is not just fill the one that I click on, but also all the ones before it. If I click on this fourth one, all the ones before it should also uh, fill up. So we can do that by checking if index two, basically looping through the small, all the small cups 
and seeing if this particular iteration, this index, is less than or equal to the index that we click on. Okay, now if that's true, we'll take the cup and we'll add a class to it. So we'll say class list add and we'll add the full class else. Then we want to remove the class. So I'll just go ahead and copy that and then we'll just set instead of add. We want to remove. So I'll save that and, and let's go over here. And if I click on one of these, you see that fills up. If I click on the fourth one, it's going to fill up up to that cup. Okay, so no matter which one I click on, it's going to fill up to that. But one thing I want to do is if let's say if I click on the fourth one here, if I click on it again, I want this one to empty. I want to be able to toggle the last one here. So before we actually do this in highlight cups, I just want to run a check and basically say if the if the one that we're clicking on is full and the next one is not, then we want to decrease the index by one and, and you know, get rid of this so we can toggle it. So the way we can do that is by checking small cups, which remember is a node list, which is similar to an array. So I want to get the current index, meaning the current one we click on. And I want to check the class list and see if it contains. So there's a method called contains. Where we check for a specific class. I want to see if it contains full and I want to see if it if the next one doesn't contain full. So I'm going to say if not small cups the current index and then I'm going to use the property called next element sibling and check the class list of that. So now I'm checking the next one to see if the class list contains full or I should say doesn't contain because we have this, you know, this exclamation here, which means not. If this is true, then let's take the current index and decrement by one. So now if I click on, you know, the third and this is full, but this is not. And I click again, it's going to decrease the index and make that go away. If I click again, it's going to fill it so I can now toggle the last one. OK, so that should be good. Now, that's pretty much it for the, the small cups, this highlight cups function. Next, we want to add a, a function called update big cup, where depending on how many cups are filled down here, this is going to be filled to a specific point. We also want to show the percentage number. We also want to show what's remained. So we'll get into that next. OK, so now that we were able to fill and empty these small cups down here, we want to work on the big ones. So we're going to actually call the function we're going to create in two places. One is going to be right when the, the application loads. So let's call update big cup. And then we also want to call it when we click on one of these. So at the end of highlight cups, so right under the loop here, let's say update big cup and let's go down here and let's create function update big cup. So the first thing I want to do is get the amount, the, the number of full glasses. So that's pretty easy. We can just create a variable called full glasses or let's call it full cups, not full glasses. So full cups is going to be document dot. So document dot query selector all because we want to select all the full cups. So in here, let's pass in. It has to have the class of cup small and also have the class of full in, in the in query selector and query selector all we can pass in any CSS selector. So this is just going to get all the full ones and we want to get the length. So let's say dot length. And then just to show you that we can console log the uh, full cups and we'll go down here and we see zero because it calls it right away. But then I'm going to click on this one here. We see that there's two, three, four and so on. So we have the full cups. Let's also get the total cups. So const total cups, which is just going to be all the small cups. So the length. Remember, small cups we brought in up here, which gives us a node list, which we can call length on so we can see the total cups here, which is always going to be eight. Right now, I want to hide the percentage, which we don't have an actual percentage in there right now anyways. But let's just say we did like 20 percent. We want that to hide if if it's empty. Um, so if there's no full cups, so let's say if 
if full cups is equal to zero, that means that it should be empty. So we want the percentage. We want the style and I'm going to set the visibility equal to hidden. And let's also set the height. So percentage whoops. Uh, percentage dot style dot height. I'm going to set that to zero. OK, now you can see that kind of flashes for a second there, but it is actually setting it to hidden and setting it the height to zero. So I'm just going to get rid of that hard coded 20% there. Now, let's have an else. So basically, if if it has something in it, then we want that percentage. We want it to show. So let's set this style dot visibility. We want to set that now to visible and let's set percentage dot style. We want to set the height, so style height and the height we're going to actually get by doing. Let's put up some back ticks in here, but we can get the height by taking the full glass or full cups and divide it by the total cups and then multiply it by the height of this large cup here, which if you remember is 330 pixels. So whatever the height is, that's what we want to multiply it by and then pass in here just pixels. So I'm going to save that and close this up. And if I hit this first one here, it's going to fill it up to there, there. Okay, now we want the text to say the percentage as well. Right now we're only filling the height. So let's set the uh, percentage dot inner text. And we're going to set that to a set of back ticks. And in here, once again, we're going to get the full cups and we want to divide that by the total cups. And let's multiply that by 100 because we want to get like, you know, 25%, whatever. So I'll save that. If I click this first one, we get 12.5. Actually, let's just add a percentage sign right here. So we get 12.5%, 25%, 37. That's half. That's 50, 62, 75, 87.5, 100. Now we still have this up here, this remained, which we don't want to show if this is full. So underneath this if statement here, Let's create another one and we're going to deal with the remain now. So we want to check to see if full cups is equal to the total cups, meaning it's full. So if it's full, we're going to take remained and we're going to set the style dot visibility to hidden because we don't want to show that. And then let's also set the height to zero. So remained dot style dot height. We're going to set that to zero. So save and we're going to see this remained until it's completely full. Then it goes away. Even if it's here, we can see it now. It's we, we don't see the remain text anymore because we've removed it from the DOM. We've set the visibility to hidden and we've never set it back or the height. So here we want to have an else. Then we'll set remained dot style dot visibility and we want to set that back to visible if it's not full, right? So set that to visible and we also want to set the text of remained. So if I just save this right now, fill it up, it disappears. If it's not totally full, we do see remain, but we don't see the leaders. Okay, remember up here we have a span with the ID of leaders, so we want to show the leaders that are remaining. So to do that, let's say remained And we want to set uh, I'm sorry, not remain. We want to set leaders. We brought that in up at the be at the beginning at the top. We want to set the inner text of that. And let's put some back ticks here. And what I'm going to do is take 250 because that's the, the number down here of milliliters. And we want to divide that not divide, multiply that by the full cups. And then we want to divide that by a thousand because we want it to say, you know, 0.25 or 0.5, whatever. Um, and then I'm going to just 
let's just see what this does actually. So if I click on that, it says 0.25 remain. That's not true. It's actually 0.25 full of for of two liters. If I click on this one here, it says one remained. Click here, 1.25 remain, which is not correct. Right. If I click on this one, 1.75 remained is not correct. It should be 0.25 remained on this spot. So what we'll do is let's wrap this in parentheses, what we just put here and let's go to the beginning here and say two, which is the, the total number of liters and minus that from it. Now, if I click on the first one, we have 175 remained. If I click on this one here, we only have 0.25 remained. Okay, so and obviously if I click here, it's 100%. We have zero remained. So, so that should do it. Good. Actually, I want to put an L there for liters. So, right after the curly brace, we'll just put an L. So, two liters remained. Click here, 1.57 remained, and it's 12.5% full. 25% full, 1.5 liter remaining. All right, so it seems to be working. So that's it. Let's go ahead and move on to the next project.